In this lesson, I'll show you how to graph the polar equation of a conic. This is question number one. The steps to doing this are outlined in your screen, and in step number one, if necessary, we have to write the equation in one of the standard forms shown below. It's important to do this because by writing it in the standard form, you can tell a lot about the conic. In fact, you can tell where the directrix is, where the major axes are, and so on. After step number one, you have to use the standard form to determine the value of E and P. And that's important because by knowing what E is, you can determine what type of conic it is, whether it's a parabola, hyperbola, or an ellipse. And little p is related to the directrix, which is equally important when it comes to graphing. Finally, in step number three, you gather up all of this information and you graph the conic. Question one reads, graph the polar equation R is equal to 4 over 2 minus cosine theta. We'll follow the steps that were outlined above. The first one said write the equation in standard form. And what we want to do is we want to make this 2 into a 1 because all standard form equations were 1 plus minus e cosine sine. So let's go ahead and do that. We have r is equal to 4 over, and I'll factor out a 2, where this becomes a 1 minus half cosine theta. 4 over 2 is equal to 2 and e is equal to 1 over 2, which is between 0 and 1. Therefore, we're dealing with an ellipse. Taking a look at the standard equations again, we had ep in the numerator. And in our case, that's equal to 2. ep is equal to 2. This is for step number 2, of course. I'll substitute 1 over 2 into e. And now I can solve for p. I'll multiply both sides by 2, and I end up with p is equal to 4. The reason why p is important is because it's related to the directrix. And if you zoom in into this graph, the relationship between e and p is shown right here. What's interesting about our equation is that it actually looks like this one. And because it looks like this one, you'll notice that the major axis is horizontal. And because the major axis is horizontal, the directrix will be vertical. In our particular case, the directrix is vertically up, therefore it's x is equal to minus p. So our directrix is at x is equal to negative 4. We know e, p, and our directrix. We can start the sketch. In fact, I'll create a polar plane, very simply, one vertical line, and one horizontal line. This will be my polar axis. And my directrix is at negative 4, so I'll say that's up to here. This is 4 units from 0. That's my directrix. And an ellipse has two vertices, so that's what we need to find out next. We need to find out the vertices. Now, because our equation suggests that our major axis is along the horizontal, the vertex will be at an angle of 0 and an angle of pi. So we'll set theta is equal to 0 radians and theta is equal to pi radians. Think about it. If you had an ellipse, it would be like this, what I'm hovering around, and you'd have one point along 180 degrees and another point along 0 degrees. We're working with a polar plane, not an xy plane, so keep that in mind. I need to find out exactly the r that represents 0 and pi, so I'll substitute these values back into my equation. You can use the original equation or the modified one, it doesn't matter. I'll use the original. And if I substitute 0 into here and I substitute pi into here, I'll end up with two r values. The first r value, if I substitute 0, I end up with 4. If I substitute pi and make sure that your calculator is in radians, I'll end up with 4 over 3. So we have two points. We have one point at 4 and 0 radians and another point at 4 over 3 and pi. Now when you graph polar equations, remember that you first locate the angle. In our first point here we have an angle of 0, so it's this way, and it's 4 units that way. So our point should be right here. And another point is at pi, which means it's shooting in this direction, 4 over 3. So if that's one unit, that's another. 4 over 3 is in between 2 and 1, should be over here. 
So we have the vertices for our ellipse, but we still need a few more points, just to be more accurate, even though this is just a sketch. We will create a table for some random theta values between 0 and pi. So let's choose pi over 2, 2 pi over 3, 3 pi over 4, and 5 pi over 6. If you substitute these into your equation, your original equation, you should end up with values of 2, 1.6, 1.5, and 1.4. So let's graph these points. At pi over 2, it shoots up two units. So we'll have a point here. At 2 pi over 3, which is equivalent to 120 degrees, that's around here, we have 1.6. At 3 pi over 4, 135 degrees. And finally, at 5 pi over 6, we have 1.4. If I connect these, I should end up with an ellipse. That's my sketch, and of course, if you want to be more accurate, you would need to take into account symmetry, you would need to take into account more points, and eventually you would end up with a perfect looking ellipse on a polar plane. And there you have it. That is how to graph a polar equation for a conic.